An active storm track setting up with multiple days of severe weather, including all hazards today and tomorrow, meaning a large hail, strong winds, and the potential for tornadoes for many Americans. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this wonderful Wednesday, and hopefully we're having an all right middle of the week out there. And again, the big story is the severe weather today and tomorrow, but uh, trust me, it's going to change what the story is, and that's going to be the heat that builds in. Over the next seven days, I'm eyeing a heat wave this weekend and into early next week for really much of the eastern United States uh, from Florida, potentially all the way up the eastern seaboard. A big dome of heat, again, likely to build in, and that's really going to affect your forecast. And we'll definitely talk about that in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Also, uh, go ahead, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I post there pretty regularly. Uh, excuse me, the uh, link for that is going to be in the description. You'll see, uh, check out my socials. There'll be a link tree. You click on that and then you can just click on the Facebook icon or the Twitter or slash X icon. Uh, or really any other social media that you may want to follow me on. But definitely trying to gain uh, my uh, Facebook base a little bit. So uh, definitely check that out for more updates on the weather, especially if you live locally uh, here into the Carolinas. I'll definitely be posting even more regularly uh, for you folks there. But again, I'll uh, touch on national weather as well. I also want to say thank you to everyone who congratulated me on uh, the new job yesterday. It really does mean a lot. Um, uh, really just, uh, again, kind of a little bit of shock and awe still on um all the kind words everyone has said. So I do appreciate that. Uh, and I'll tell you, yesterday was my second day on the job in training and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I love it. Definitely some learning to be done and uh, all of that. But uh, obviously that comes with time. And uh, at the ripe old age of 21 that I am, I think I should have plenty of time to uh, kind, of, uh, kind of grow and learn uh, all the aspects. So uh, definitely excited for that. All right, let's dive on into the weather. That's enough about me. And let's start taking a look at some maps out there. We'll start with our uh, upper level water vapor loop today. And you can see... Uh, we definitely have a bit of an active pattern in the jet stream. Uh, you can kind of see this little area of spin here right over the heart of the map. That is pulling a lot of water vapor with it. Uh, and out in front of it, we're going to see, I think, a really good round of storms. I say really good, maybe not so good for the people who have to go through it. But from a meteorological standpoint, pretty strong, uh, impressive line of storms through this circled area on the map today especially up into Indiana, Michigan, and Illinois, and even portions of Ohio. That's where I'm watching for a heightened tornado risk today. We've got a lot of spin out there uh, with this surface low pressure and a lot of moisture as well to go with it. So definitely need to watch that today uh, up into that region. And again, it's another day where a lot of folks, even out in front of that, where severe weather may be a little less likely, uh, still going to run the chance of some pretty strong to severe storms here with this sort of pattern. And then behind it, uh, we're going to reset the pattern and we're going to do something completely different, as you'll see here in just a moment. Uh, now, as for radar imagery, yeah, guess what? Uh, it's making sense as well, given what we're seeing on satellite. Just a lot of rain falling right now. Uh, and you can see right here is that surface low pressure, right, where I showed you basically over St. Louis right around noon Eastern time today. As we go through the day, though, this is going to lift up towards Michigan. And anything right here to the south and to the east of that is where we're going to run heightened severe weather potential. And that does include tornadoes today. So uh, you really got to have a way to get those watches and warnings. I think it's a day that might catch some people off guard, especially in Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio uh, during the evening hours of today. So watch out for that. Again, could be a big deal for some folks. Out in front of it, just your good old-fashioned pop-up summertime afternoon storms along the Appalachia chain from Heck, really, Alabama all the way up to Pennsylvania and New York State and all points in between. It's going to be another day of those afternoon storms out ahead of that main piece of energy that's producing the severe weather over, again, portions of the Midwest. All right, folks, let's go ahead and switch on over now. Take a look at uh, some upper level maps and the severe weather forecast for today and tomorrow. And we'll start diving into some mesoscale model data. Well, the upper levels today are very crucial for that severe weather forecast and really for the coming days ahead. Uh, here's the setup. We've got, uh, again, pretty well-defined trough here in the mid-levels. This is 500 millibars, so halfway up in the atmosphere, at least in terms of mass. Um, but uh, you can definitely see a, a pretty well-defined troughing feature there. As we talk about on the channel, it's everything out in front of these troughs. That's where things get exciting then behind it. Uh, that's where you know things are maybe a little more boring, if you will. Um, but uh, again, here's our trough axis, uh, pretty neutrally tilted right now. Uh, but as we go throughout the day today, and this is this afternoon, you'll notice this will continue to push 
push off towards the north and east and uh, even kind of maybe try to get a little bit of negative tilt to it, but really stays pretty neutral. And that's pretty typical for this time of the year. In fact, a lot of times uh, during the, uh, the month of June and July, we get more positively tilted troughs. Uh, which would generally produce less severe weather, but we've got this neutral state today and tomorrow, so I think that's why the severe weather risk is heightened a little bit. We're getting even more lift associated with this storm, uh, but again, you can kind of track it here, uh, tracking right through the Midwest. This is by tomorrow morning, Thursday, uh, and you'll notice in our trough over Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio, and like I said, everything behind it kind of calms down a little bit, uh, at least immediately behind where we get some upper level convergence, but out in front of it, uh, yeah, we still got this risk zone of lift, and that's another area we could see severe weather for our Thursday afternoon. And you can see here, uh, we'll move the map ahead. That continues working on through. And by the time we get to Friday, uh, all of the active part of that trough is kind of cleared through the country. But then you can see another active area kind of beginning to develop back out west. We'll touch on that here in just a moment. But before we do, uh, let's take a look at that risk area for today and tomorrow. The Storm Prediction Center is running an enhanced risk for today. That's a level three out of five. And uh, you can see the big cities involved in it, really the entire state of Indiana, uh, the southern and the eastern portion of Illinois from Urbana, all the way back down towards Mount Vernon, Carbondale. This does include Cape Girardeau, Sykeston, Missouri, uh, and into Farmington, and then up through Evansville, Louisville, into the western sections of Ohio, Toledo, back down towards Dayton and then up to Lansing, Kalamazoo, and Jackson, uh, Michigan. That's where the heart of it today will be. But if I zoom out, again, notice uh, anyone shaded in the darker green, the yellow, or the orange could see a strong to severe storm today. Even a little pocket here into the mid-Atlantic, Philly, all the way down to D.C., and then another pocket up into the Dakotas. Now, what's driving this? Well, like I said, the tornado threat is there today. In fact, I would not be surprised if we overdo this a little bit, uh, but a 5% threat in itself is already noteworthy. Again, I think uh, basically right where the SPC has a drawn here. It's basically where I would draw that highest risk today. Uh, from the US 69 corridor in Michigan and the US 94 corridor southbound, uh, or I guess really the 94 corridor, and uh, I guess this is the 96 corridor, isn't it, from... Uh, uh, Grand Rapids over to Detroit. So let me let me redo my geography lesson here from the U.S. 96 corridor, rather uh, southbound all the way through Indiana into eastern Ohio and western Illinois. That's where the highest chance of a tornado or really multiple tornadoes would be today. Uh, now, I could see a spin up even as far south as the Red River. But again, the highest threat going to be in that brown area on your map, the wind threat. Uh, another thing we need to watch here, we do have a pretty heightened risk for strong straight line winds. And uh, I'll tell you, summertime, uh, these ones will sneak up on you. There's some places even you're not in a threat area and you get a good. I'll tell you, the upstate of South Carolina last night uh, got a good Oconee, Pickens County, Anderson, Greenville got absolutely walloped. Uh, I read somewhere that I think in uh, this region, uh, if you're familiar with the area, Blue Ridge Co-op had the most power outages since Helene. So uh, again, you can never sleep on these summertime storms. They, uh, they can pack a punch for sure. And that'll be a common theme today here in the highlighted region for wind and then hail, a bit of a lower threat today, but could still definitely see some large hailstones anywhere shaded in. Now that's today. What about tomorrow for our uh, Thursday? Another day of severe weather potential uh, running a slight risk. That's a little two out of five. Uh, anywhere from Maine all the way back down to the Carolinas uh, could see severe storms. But really, I'll tell you, I think the heart of it is going to be right into the northern section of this from, we'll say, D.C. northbound uh, up into Maine is probably where we're going to have the highest overlapping of ingredients. And those ingredients could produce a couple tornadoes. You can see not a huge risk tomorrow, but it is on the map. Uh, we do have that 2% uh, chance of a couple tornadoes, basically right where I, I told you, uh, from Richmond and D.C. northbound all the way up to the Canadian border. The wind threat, also going to be something we watch out for. This will be the easier threat to come by, I think. And we could even see gusty winds all the way down into the Carolinas and portions of the southeast for your Thursday. And then the hail threat, uh, not overly impressed with that tomorrow. I think it'll be more of a wind and um, a tornado potential for many of us. Alrighty, well, that's that. Look, let's switch on over now, take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh model, and then start taking a look at the rest of the week ahead and that heat dome that's likely to build in. All right, here we go, latest model data, and you can see, yeah, picking up pretty good on that surface low pressure we mentioned here right over Illinois uh, by the time we get to this afternoon. This should be about 2 p.m. Eastern, so probably right around when many of you are watching this video. Uh, and that tornado threat, again, going to be the highest right along that surface low pressure, kind of two areas. The one area circled there 
Um, and uh, the pink color, that's our cold front. And then also we're gonna have a bit of a warm front here uh, in the blue color. So kind of two different zones, we're gonna watch for tornado potential associated with that surface low pressure, at least the highest potential of it. Uh, so you can see, here we go by the evening. This is 5 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Central Time, the heart of this getting near Chicago. I'll tell you, Chicago, you're going to have a rough evening uh, commute out here. Very heavy rainfall, tornado potential really through much of Indiana uh, around that time. And then by the time we get later on, it pulls up into Michigan with that severe weather potential. The southern half of the state and then into western Ohio, potentially seeing strong to severe storms. Kentucky uh, going to get in on the action. And I think that's really where we're going to have the most widespread potential is, again, this corridor right here from Michigan back down to Kentucky. Uh, further south of there from the Ozarks back into Oklahoma, more of an isolated to scattered storm instead of widespread threat. Uh, but those could still become strong and severe. Definitely, uh, you know, give them a look. And then along the Appalachia chain, uh, afternoon uh, pop up storms, some of which could become strong. Uh, but really, again, it's uh, this circled area right here in pink that we're watching for the highest severe weather potential today. In fact, probably should circle that a little bit better. Let me circle it like this. This area is where we're watching for severe weather potential. So uh, that's going to be today and into this evening. Again, this is by 8 p.m. Uh, now, after the sun goes down, the threat will die down somewhat, not go to zero by any means. But by the time the sun goes down, we lose some instability. Uh, this storm, though, again, it's driven in the upper levels. It's not surface based. So overnight, it's uh, still going to keep going. It could, or excuse me, it definitely should lose some steam. Uh, but uh, you can still see by the time we get to tomorrow morning waking up, uh, yeah, pretty good line of storms here. Uh, working through Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, northern Mississippi, and Alabama. <laughs> excuse me, kind of detached from the main surface low at that point. Uh, but still, it could produce some rumbles of thunder, some gusty winds. We'll watch that for your Thursday morning commute. And then by the time we get to Thursday afternoon, yeah, peak heating once again rushes in and with it and all the lift associated with this storm, another corridor of strong to severe weather. Uh, again, from Maine all the way back down through the Virginias, uh, heck, even into extreme southeastern Ohio could see some strong storms tomorrow afternoon for your Thursday. That uh, kind of crosses through the Appalachia region, gets into the I-95 corridor by evening commute and into the overnight uh, and then kind of begins to work on out later on into overnight Thursday. Now, for my friends down into the Carolinas, uh, we've got the potential for severe weather. The question is, though, um, do we have enough forcing? Do we get the trigger? Look, again, our surface low is all the way up here near Niagara Falls, basically, and the front associated with it weakens as it moves further south. So, uh, again, pretty much, I would say, a guarantee of enough lift Virginia northbound, but it's south of there. North Carolina, South Carolina, is there enough lift for these storms to get going? That's the big question. If the storm does form down there, definitely could become strong to severe uh, for sure. And then you can see overnight Thursday here. You see a new threat developing back into the Midwest, but we begin to calm down here into the eastern seaboard. All right, let's switch on over now and uh, let's talk about the rest of the week ahead. More severe weather, more heat, and what that means for your forecast. The upper level map again coming in handy. A different view of it. This is our height anomaly map, and let's move this out ahead in the time. We'll pick up uh, here Friday morning, kind of where we left off, and notice. Uh, here's that associated storm we just talked about, but a new storm, uh, probably a stronger one, I'd say even, or definitely a stronger one, beginning to work into the Pacific Northwest, and between it, a good old-fashioned ridge, a kind of omega pattern here uh, setting up. We saw one of these uh, a couple months ago, uh, and with that, a lot of heat and humidity is going to build into the country. Notice these, uh, these height values just explode over the eastern part of the country, uh, really east of the Rockies, especially east of the Mississippi, all the way up to the Canadian border into the Great Lakes a big dome of heat building in by the weekend. Uh, now that's one part of the storyline. The other part of the story is again, this storm out west. Uh, it's gonna produce a lot of lift out in front of it. We're gonna get another pocket of severe weather potential uh, kind of right into this circle region on your map. That's where the heat and the lift and the wind shear are all gonna overlap by the time we get to the later uh, half of this week, especially into the weekend, and then into early next week, you can see this heat dome going nowhere and these little pieces of energy rotating around it uh, pretty plentifully. And you can see it even better on this map, the vorticity map. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is... Um, your Friday morning, and uh, you can see here comes that ridge beginning to build in, but notice we've got these little shortwave pieces of energy. Here's one right here. Uh, this is by Friday, and it's these little pieces that produce enough lift over this very unstable environment uh, severe weather becomes a, a bigger concern that we need to watch for here by Friday. Uh, you can see Friday afternoon, I think Minnesota, the Dakotas could get in on the action there. And then it's just more of these pieces of energy continuing to rotate around this ridge, 
classic ring of fire. And this is where we're gonna run the threat of all hazards, severe weather-wise, uh, again, over the Northern Rockies and into the Northern Plains and even portions of the Midwest with a pattern like this, really starting this weekend and then uh, potentially going well into next week. You can see with all those pieces of energy getting shot kind of around that system that is unfortunately going to mean some severe weather. Uh, so let's back it up. Here's your Friday afternoon. Again, you can see that first piece of energy I told you, uh, creating an area of potential strong severe storms over Minnesota, Iowa, and uh, even into Wisconsin there, could even get into the Dakotas. We'll watch it for Friday. And then that just kind of continues, folks. That's Friday. Notice by Saturday, another round of strong storms over the same area. Uh, by Sunday, you can see just kind of these pieces of energy rotating around that ring and producing that potential of severe weather. Again, could last quite some time, probably the next seven plus days or so. That pattern really looks to lock into place. All right, final thing we'll talk about are temperatures and that potential heat wave. Let's go ahead and take a look at it now. Yeah, you know, with that big heat dome, that means, guess what? Temperatures are going to be on the rise. Yeah, you guessed it for sure. Uh, and you can see how that kind of begins. Now, we could see a very slight, I don't even want to say cool down, but it could feel a little bit nicer after this current system works on through for some of us. Not going to last for long, though. Check out the weekend. Here's Saturday afternoon. You can see uh, these are temperature anomalies. So the number you see, that's how above or below average your temperature is. So for example, let's pocket over Nebraska, uh, the European ensembles. And again, this is a blend. So this is a pretty good gauge. This could even be underdone a little bit, uh, indicating 20 plus degrees above what we should be this time of year. Uh, for your Saturday afternoon, and that's only the beginning of it. Notice this locks into place east of the Rockies, especially east of the Mississippi. Uh, now out west, it uh, cools down a little bit. We get below average temperatures, and even on the northern edge of this ring where we got some stormy action, uh, again, going to beat down the heat a little bit. But if you're from uh, Michigan, the northeast, uh, the Ohio Valley, down into the southeast, yeah, a big dome of heat building in and locking into place here by Monday uh, hangs all the way into next week. This is the middle of next week. Uh, so yeah, this looks like a full-blown heat wave for many of us. Now, the question you're probably wondering is, well, Gerald, how hot is hot? Uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. This is Saturday afternoon high temperatures. Uh, we're cresting the 100 degree mark here in the portions of the plains. We're into the 90s through much of the east here, east of the Mississippi. Uh, so uh, definitely hot, nothing um, that we haven't seen before. But for June, this is, this is pretty hot. And then you go into next week, check out next Tuesday. Yeah, we're nearing triple digits in the mid-Atlantic, Virginia. North Carolina through Philly. Uh, yeah, upper 90s. We've got mid to upper 90s in the Carolinas, into the deep south, um, back into the Ohio Valley, mid 90s. So uh, this is going to get super hot. Uh, I th definitely think heat advisories, potentially uh, excessive heat warnings could be issued uh, with a pattern like this. And uh, definitely will be something that we need to keep an eye on. So uh, go ahead and plan now. Uh, if you've got a cooler little time anytime soon to get some yard work done, maybe get it done, especially if you're not in one of those stormy areas. Uh, might not be a bad idea before this weekend, and especially early next week, we really crank the dial on the oven up, and uh, we start to feel it outside and start to uh, get into the peak here of summer. I say the peak, really the start of it's Friday is the first day of the solstice, so uh, we're really just at the beginning, but it's going to feel like the peak at least for many of us. Alrighty, folks, so that's all I got for you on this uh, it is Wednesday, right? Uh, so hopefully y'all enjoyed the video. Again, go ahead, follow me on Facebook, follow me on X slash Twitter, whatever you'd like to call it. I'll definitely keep you updated there. And obviously still continuing the daily videos here as well. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe and I'll see you all next time.